Hey guys, welcome to yet another video. Today we have Diksha with us. She is joining Google next summer as a software engineer. She is also an intern at Microsoft and she has also been a part of uh, Adobe Women in Tech Scholarship. So welcome Diksha and thanks for coming to our channel. And if you can briefly introduce yourself, please go ahead. Thank you so much for calling me. Uh, as far as my introduction is concerned, uh, so like my name is Diksha Pandey. I'm from Lucknow. I'm doing my college from Bundel Khan Institute of Engineering Technology, which is situated in Jhansi. I am a final year student. My stream is computer science and engineering. Uh, like right now, I'm going to an internship, support engineer internship at Microsoft. And later, I'll be joining Google as a software engineer by the month of July. Great, great. Uh, first of all, congratulations for uh, having an offer from Google. And uh, I think Google is a dream company for a lot of students. And I think you've inspired a lot of students on LinkedIn and other platforms. And also, you are inspiring a lot of uh, women just like you who are uh, in, in tech. Uh, so congratulations on that. And secondly, uh, Diksha, if you can briefly explain your... First, we will start with the Microsoft internship process, if you can briefly touch upon the process, how many rounds were there and how you got into the internship. Yeah, so like I, there's a fixathon named Hackathon conducted by Microsoft. Uh, they started this Hackathon last year only. It was this the second year of that Hackathon. So it was basically Fixathon 2.0. Okay. So in that Hackathon, I applied in the month of, I guess in the September. And then I got the call from that in the first week of October from Microsoft. Okay. And then there were like multiple rounds. This hackathon was stretched into basically three to four months span. Firstly, there was GD, then there was break fix round, then there was multiple sessions. Then at hmm. last we had a normal hackathon. Okay. Uh, like we, the, they only made the team and there were like five teams consisting of uh, five participants each. And then like we complete and then there were like the winner. So it was not actually like the normal hackathon process. It, mm. it was more upgraded and more personalized by the Microsoft. So basically what happened like in the in that whole three, four months, they were continuously screening the students. Mm. So mm. Uh, we don't know the actual criteria, but they had some hidden factors based upon which they uh, then uh, like called the uh, candidates for the interviews. So mm. then we had a two round of in interview. First one was technical that the manager round of interview then there was second round was like the language screening round hmm. so like after this three four month hackathon then the two rounds of interviews then finally i got the mail like for the uh, internship okay great great and uh all, all these rounds were uh online i assume right due to covid and and it was completely yeah completely virtual and and if you can like uh, put in how many number of rounds were there, uh, four, five, any any exact number, or or it yeah, was a continuous were, process. Like, yeah, it was actually a continuous process. But if I like uh, uh, like mark out the main rounds, so hmm. there were like four to five rounds were there. And the most important part was that it was not at all uh, DSA uh, concentrated, hmm. like uh, hmm. because the role was of support engineer. So okay. there they more they tested us upon the uh, networking, the computer networking skills, the operating system skills, and the uh, basic of Azure that is cloud computing. Okay. So it is very good opportunity for students who are not very much interested or not very hmm. much willingly to go into the DSA field. Okay, great, great. And uh, also, like I know, like you have been a part of uh, Adobe Women in Tech Scholarship. So if you can share your journey with that as well, and what is Adobe Women in Tech Scholarship. Yeah. Uh, so basically, uh, uh, not only Adobe, there are multiple uh, like uh, MNCs, like if you take a talk about the Google or Microsoft, Amazon, they all conduct a diversity hiring. Hmm. Uh, so a diversity hiring, we can say, or we can also say some uh, this scholarship events or some tech hmm. events, basically concentrated for the women. Uh, okay. like the women in tech in India mm -hmm. and like uh, most important part is that they are uh, basically concentrated for the initial uh, like stages of women like for the second year or for the first year student mm -hmm. so that, that, similarly the Adobe Women in Technology in, uh, you can say scholarship event was the uh, student the women student who are in the second year of their engineering okay uh, it was of the college and domain the only mm. restriction was the uh, the student should be in the second year engineering 
okay uh, they were like this initially there was a there was this application round so in hmm. any scholarship event the the application round is very much important you have to fill long long answer there are multiple essay hmm. questions there was also hmm. a recommendation letter from the professor so okay. based upon the application they uh, scrutinized few students and then we had a two to three rounds of interviews okay so after yes yeah, so that was the whole process and uh, what were the interviews based upon technical interviews behavioral or a mix of both yeah yeah mix of both actually uh, since the students are from the second year they do not expect hmm. much from you Yeah. They like initially the, whatever you have given in the resume, you should be thorough with that. Like they, if you have written any project, so they were like as far as I remember, they were uh, many uh, visually focusing on the projects that I have mentioned on my resume. Mm. It doesn't matter whether they are big or small because they also know that you are only second year. They know you are not expected to make a huge project, but whatever mm. you have, you should be able to showcase them. So mm. you should be ready with the live demo and how you made it. and uh, as far as the behavioral is concerned so since they are giving you a scholarship they want to know the background of okay. your and how you can use that scholarship how you go, and they also uh, like uh, go with the thought of promoting other women in tech mm-hmm. also mm-hmm. so you should have this uh, mindset also in order to get the scholarship or get ahead in this event great great and does this uh, scholarship entail uh, any internship offers as well or is basically a monetary benefit Yeah, actually, there is a monetary benefit also, and there is an internship offer also. It okay. it is a, a monetary is actually fixed, but internship is based upon your interest. Like many people go with that, many people do not consider it. Mm-hmm. So it's it's not uh, like you can say it's not confirmed, but yeah, mm. monetary thing is confirmed. Okay, great, great. And now, uh, coming finally to the uh, Google interview process and how you cracked Google. So if you can. briefly lay out your plan for cracking google yeah so like uh, there was not a- any such plan because i come from a tier 3 college so i do not mm. like I-, i was preparing for the google amazon like the indiv- like the question set or the mock mm-hmm. interview that i used to do was at that level but honestly not uh, even in any point of my preparation journey i expected that i will be able to crack it mm-hmm. I-, i was aiming for uh, for some decent placement uh but yeah but i was preparing and applying to google so uh, what happened in uh, my google journey is like i didn't apply for the position for which i got the call since i like already got the offer into the microsoft uh, i like i somewhat got distracted and i got um, like involved in some other things so i was not mm-hmm. keeping track of the position that was getting opened and all that mm-hmm. so like i was in my college only when i got the call from the recruiter that we are uh, doing our hiring uh, It, the hiring was i got the call on around 3 or 4th of march and okay. like she scheduled my interview on the 9th of march and okay. i was like not at all ready <laughs> i also asked her to like kind of reschedule it because i was not in a preparation hmm. mode for even for like around last one or two months hmm. but like they said that we are short of time uh, we we were supposed to end the interviews by february Uh, but we didn't just so we it's not like any chance to extend the interview mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so like i gave the interview and since they were like uh, on the short short of time so usually what happens there are like a multiple rounds of interview one one week after two mm-hmm. week and like there is a whole one or two month process long mm-hmm. process but in my case it was like a one day process and okay. like in one day only my all round of interviews mm-hmm. happened like there were around four four rounds of interviews first round was 45 minute round that was purely technical round and mm. then after that three rounds happened that was of 60 60 minute rounds 45 mm. minute round 45 minutes was for the technical like i got one dsa question and i have to solve it with proper like coding and all that and mm. and uh, after 45 minutes there were like the 15 minutes that was the you can behavior round that is known as googleness mm. round in google okay so yeah and like just like uh, all happened like in the sev i started my interview on the 7 pm and it got around 12 am mm. so, so it happened back to back and then next day morning only i got the call from the like mail from the my recruiter that like you have cleared the interviews and now you are we are moving you ahead in the uh, hiring manager round and mm. then after one day 
I got the call. Like that was basically confirmation call since I had the offer from the Microsoft also. So they just wanted to confirm like if if they will give me offer, then will I be able to hmm. uh, take it or I will move ahead with the like all and conversation was discussed. Hmm. And then after next day, I got the like proper offer letter. Okay, great, great. And uh, in the process of your technical interviews. Uh, uh, what was the level of questions or does the level increased uh, during the rounds or like uh, how was your preparation guidance like you use lead code or any platforms like that yeah so it, as far as the interviews are con concerned not only of google of like i have i have given interview in the microsoft also in amazon also and google mm. also mm. so as far as the interviews are concerned they are like uh, it might go to a higher level but mostly it's it concentrated upon the medium and hard level lead code questions. Okay. So in my in my this Google round also, the, the questions were basically from the medium hard to hard level lead code questions. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, in in I think uh, this question comes a lot in in a student's preparation journey to how to effectively use lead code. Like, is it all about like solving how many number of questions or is it uh, quantity or uh, quality over quantity. So what do you think uh, is the best strategy for uh, solving lead code questions? I guess actually it depends from the person to person. Like what hmm. I initially did was uh, like, I was very new to the coding and I do not have any kind of a mentor and, and hmm. I, I never ever joined the courses also. Hmm. So whatever I learned was for the free material available. So I like, uh, like uh, other students, I also go to the YouTube and watch the various channels on how to prepare and all that. So, mm. like from that, I got the like the sheets. There are many sheets available on the YouTube mm. preparation sheet. So I followed one of them. I did like all the questions, 400, 450 question. I did all of that. So what happened to me was like I was able to solve some standard question. I was able to get the thought process. I was able to learn a lot of the data structures and how the mm. algorithms work. But when the new question used to come, uh, I used to go blank. Like mm. I was, if, if the question is in whatever I've solved in yeah. that region, then I'm able to do that. But I was not able to tackle the new question. So yeah. that, and, and if we are not able to do that, then there's nothing good of doing all that question. Exactly. So like after, like, uh, so I will not say like quantity also matter, quality also matter. So mm. after, when I started facing this issue, what, uh, till that I was purely on these for these and mm. doing the standard questions, solving the things. And then after I got to know about the lead code, like there's a lead code, the interview question directly also comes from the lead code. So what I started that, like if the one of the data structure is clear and I want to practice it, then I used to open the, this, the lead code and the, uh, with that tab, suppose mm -hmm. like the graphs. So yeah. I used to open the graph and I used to do the questions uh, in the order like first easy then medium mm -hmm. then hard and i used to cover all the questions so by that when the new question used to every time new question used to come so initially mm -hmm. i had this like uncomfortable i was not able to solve but slowly it it, it a lot like it increased my problem solving a lot and also mm -hmm. like giving the contest so i was if you can say in my preparation i was purely on lead code and code forces okay. so giving the content in the contest there are always a new question used to come mm -hmm. and there's also a time restriction yeah so if you talk about the quality versus quantity, so both matters. First, you have to give a time to the quantity because you have there is a multiple, there are mm. many arenas that you need to cover, many algorithms. Once you are comfortable with all that, then you should focus more upon quality, like doing good questions, hard, hard questions and the medium questions. Mm. Great, great. I think you covered it very well. And also like... Uh if you can share what kind of projects did you had uh, in your resume or like do you think your projects were uh, a main focus during interviews um, actually i participated a lot in the hackathons and various hmm. like the scholarship events so that used to be a major like every in all of my interview the hmm. interview hmm. used to spot that like you okay. are very much active how you managed to do so. So it hmm. basically made a very positive impact in all of my interviews. And as far as my projects were concerned, so since I was participating in hackathons, hmm. in hackathons, we usually make a project only. Hmm. So during hackathons, I had like a list of two or three very like good projects, uh, which were made during the hackathons only. So uh, what I will say is like, 
it's uh, there is no need of making n number of projects only make mm. one or two project but that project should be distinctive like mm. there are many projects available like the react clone is there youtube clone mm. is there instagram clone is there so it, uh, it doesn't make any positive impact mm. on the interviewer even if you are making the clone just add some extra feature like if you are yeah. making the amazon prime clone then uh, try to add some chatbot feature or try to mm. add some voice recognition feature mm. so mm. make one or two product projects but that should be good and and also like if you have a time like if you are starting early in the first or second year uh, so like try to participate in multiple events that is happening whether mm. it's hackathon and there are multiple online quizzes or the contest are there so that also like the your ratings and mm. your participation your rankings that all also give a very positive impact on the recruiters great great yeah i think uh, this is a very nice approach i i see like you also participated in smart india hackathon and and obviously makers or fixathon so if you are participating in these kind of events automatically you will end up making some projects which will be resume worthy and that will help you in your interview process so that's a re- really great approach that way you are also uh, facing uh, how to crack ha- hackathons that way you are also um, like opening up new opportunities there and also you have you are en- ending up having a good project as well so that's a really nice approach uh and lastly uh diksha any tips for students uh, who are appearing for their interviews in the upcoming days i think a lot of students might be in the in their placement journey right now so any last words from you yeah uh, so basically the people like for who are like preparing right now so there there will be a lot of points in your journey when you will feel like just giving up like mm. nothing is happening my rating is not increasing i'm not able to solve the question it happens mm. to everyone so yeah. just don't give up don't have that like uh, give up attitude you ha- every time you have to like there is no one uh, going mm. to pro- motivate you every time you yeah. at the end you are all alone sitting in front of your laptop you you will yeah. also feel like crying you will also feel like giving up you also feel like sleeping so whatever helps you do that like take a break of one or two day but Uh, like at the end just come up and show yourself uh, mm. just keep solving then keep keep applying like i also see people they do, they actually afraid of applying mm. if like i come from a dietary college no one from my college like got in such good companies if i have like feared of applying then like there's no point like i mm. would have not ended up even like getting a call from those companies so yeah. don't fear from applying Uh, keep applying keep solving the questions and the people who are like in their uh, like giving the interviews and all that so for that like uh, be calm uh, like there is there will be no point when you will feel like you are 100% uh, mm. prepared for interviews like uh, i got only four or five days before my google interviews and i did mm. nothing there was so much like trauma there was so much i was like sort of sad or guilty <laughs> like i was able to mm. prepare anything but mm. just sit with a chill mind because if if we talk about the interviews in companies like google they are very friendly like mm. they are there to help you they will give you hint at every point mm. so like don't be scared of interviews be like be calm and give the interviews with a uh, positive impact and even if you get rejected like my first big interview was with amazon and mm. i got rejected in the final round even mm. like i solved the <laughs> but don't get you know don't get disheartened because mm. uh, like the it's rightly said that the rejection or you can say failure is a stepping stone of success and exactly. what is happening right now is like there is a boom of jobs in the it sector mm. so there is not only one opportunity there are hundreds and thousands of opportunities mm. so mm. if you get rejected in this one there is all uh, there is like bigger thing waiting for you in the future so like uh, think of that and don't be depressed and just enjoy the whole journey Great, great. I think these are very nice advice, Diksha. Like, uh, you are only going to motivate yourself. So keep, keep motiv, uh, be motivated and don't self reject yourself. Keep applying, and at the end you will definitely end up in a nice product based company. So thanks again, Diksha, for coming to our channel, and I hope uh, I I give nice wishes to you for your future. And thanks again for coming. Thank you so much for inviting me. It was really nice talking to you. Thanks again. Bye.